Okay, so we're going over distributive property and common factoring of quadratics. The very first question, a few of you read it as if it was two brackets beside each other, which was not the case. It's not a multiplication question, it is a subtraction question. Now, technically, the subtraction, what sign is beside this negative here, you could say? Yeah. So, this is a distributive property idea. And you need to take this number and you need to multiply it to all of the terms inside of the brackets, okay? So, we can essentially drop the brackets after we do this and we're left with 2x squared minus 3x minus 7. Negative 1 times positive 9x squared is negative 9x squared. <coughs> positive 3x times negative 1 is negative 3x. And negative 8 times negative 1 is positive 8. From there now, what we have is our, we need to collect our like terms, okay? So, in case you are code blind here, this and this, so our 2x squared and our negative 9x, our like terms are negative 3 and our negative 3 are like terms, and our 7 and positive 8 are like terms, okay? So, when we go to put them all together, we'll do this in red here, or I guess we'll combine it. Uh, 2x squared minus 9x squared, negative 7x squared. So that was our red one. I'll do this one in blue. Negative 3x minus 3x, negative 6x. And then negative 7 plus 8. So as a final answer, negative 7x squared minus 6x plus 1. Okay? That was a straightforward question. Many of you read far too much into it. Along with that, the next question, negative 3p cubed, q to the power of 2, multiplied by 4p Q4. This is just a strictly multiplication question. There is only one term in each of these. So what we do in these is we multiply, okay, and we'll underline them. We'll use three different types of underlining. Straight line red. We're going to multiply those two terms by each other, okay. We're going to multiply these two terms by each other. And we're going to multiply these two terms by each other. Oops. Yeah, that's the right one. Okay. So in other words, when we're multiplying these numbers, we're going to get negative 3 times negative 4. Anyone know? 12. P cubed <coughs> times P to the power of 1 is P to the power of 4. And finally, q squared times q to the power of 4. That's right. q6. So in other words, our answer should say 12 p4 q6. All right, the next question was a division type question. Same idea, there's one term on top divided by another term. So all we have to do is match up our like terms once again. So our like terms, we had our constants, which are 65 and 5. We had our x cubed and our x cubed. Now, the other ones, there's actually no other like terms between them. So there's no way we can actually affect these. We can't simplify these variables. There's no y on the bottom to simplify the y on top. There's no z on the bottom. And there's no v on the top. So I only really have to focus on these two that have like terms. So when I go to answer these, 65 divided by 5? 13. So we have 13. Now, x cubed divided by x cubed? Not zero. One. one. Okay. Technically, it becomes the number one, but when we multiply one times 13, 
It's just 13, so we don't need to write it in. But remember, it creates a 1. Now, many people would say this cancels out. You could use that term, but remember, it creates 1. If it created 0, 0 times 13 would be 0. It would cancel everything out. We'd end up with 0. It actually creates a 1. It's very important to know. And then from there, everything else, well, I'll write in blue so you know that we do have a 1. Everything else stays the exact same. Y4, Z squared. And this is where almost all of you made a mistake. The V does not come to the top. It stays on the bottom. Oh my God. So 13Y4Z squared divided by V. Next question is a distributive property type question. Now you could use FOIL. Right? And we for FOIL, it's our first terms. Inside terms, outside terms, and our last terms. Okay. And we're going to underline those. First terms in each bracket, x and x. The inside terms in each bracket are positive 6 and x. Outside terms in each bracket would be x and negative 5. And finally, the last terms are positive 6 and negative 5. Now, I want to point something out. If you guys notice this pattern, first terms and then inside terms, it's the same idea as taking the x, multiplying here, those are both first, time, first terms, and x times negative 5. Those would be outside terms. Oh, those are outside terms, sorry. Inside terms, 6 times x, and last terms, 6 times negative 5. So whether you wanted to use the rainbow method, which is something like this, x times x, x times negative 5, or you want to use FOIL, which we drew out before, and we also have 6 and negative 5, we just have to combine our terms in the end. So our first terms I'm going to do in red here. x times x gives us x squared. Let's put it in red. Inside terms, 6 times x, positive 6x. Outside terms, x times negative 5. And last terms, 6 times negative 5 is minus 30. So our two like terms are the two in the middle. We have x squared. What's 6x minus 5x? Positive x minus 30. That was our answer for the answer for. Okay, 2b. We're going to do the rainbow method. I'm going to take 3x. I multiply it by both terms in the other bracket. And then I take the second term in my first bracket and multiply it by both terms in the other bracket. So we're going to end up with, we'll do the first two in red, 3x times 4x, 12x. Squared, very important. 3x times negative 7. Negative 21. 2 times 4x. Positive 8x. And 2 times negative 7. Negative 14. Now our two like terms are negative 21 and positive 8. 12x. Negative 21 plus 8. Negative 13x minus 14. Okay, next question here. There's several ways we can go about solving this. This actually says three separate terms times each other. Now, a lot of the times I'll tell you guys to work with the brackets themselves first. And once you've foiled or used the rainbow method and simplified, then to use the three to distribute. You can do it that way. Or, and this is the trickier way, you can multiply three by the first term. But you can only multiply by the first term. If you take the 3 and multiply by all of the terms, that's wrong. Okay? That's where a lot of people made a mistake. So I'm going to go over the method I told you. Multiplication, it actually doesn't matter what order you do it in. So we're going to do with the brackets first. So we get 3. And I can go over this a little faster now because you guys have seen it before. I've gone over it twice. 2x times x gives us 2x squared. 2x times negative 4 gives us negative 8x. 1 times x is positive x. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. 
Now, this one was just like one of our earlier questions. It's just distributive property. So positive 3 times positive 4 is 12x. Sorry, positive 4x. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. I need to collect my like terms inside the bracket, which is negative 8 and positive x. Sorry, negative 8x and positive x. The 3 is still outside, 2x squared. Negative 8x plus x is negative 7x minus 4 plus 12x minus 15. There's no need for that bracket at the end. Finally, we take our 3 and we distribute to all of the numbers inside the bracket. So now all of the brackets can be dropped. 3 times 2x squared is 6x squared. 3 times negative 7x is negative 21x. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. Plus 12x minus 15. Now we collect our like terms. This is the only x squared. We have two terms that have a variable to exponent of 1. And we have two constants, negative 12 and negative 15. So we're going to end up with 6x squared. We combine our negative 21 plus 12. Anyone know? 9x. And negative 12 minus 15 negative 27 that okay common factoring okay the other ones were all expanding common factoring you need to remember this is the first step to factoring anything always look for a common factor first we're about to go into other types of factoring always look for this first no matter what you do look to see if there's a common factor and in here technically this is the number one so we got for coefficients one and five so many of you did not find a number or a greatest common factor greater than 1. We could have took 1 out, but it wouldn't change anything. What many of you guys neglected to see is that there is an x squared and an x, which means I can take the common factor of x out of both of these. Now, with common factoring, a major mistake you guys made was after you divided the terms, you didn't write the common factor outside of the brackets. You just dropped it off the equation. If the x isn't there in front of the brackets, this is no longer equivalent to that, okay? So our common factor has to go outside. x squared divided by x gives us x, and 5x divided by x is positive 5. That's it. Okay. Next one here, you guys did a little better. We noticed that our coefficients all have a common factor of the number 2. So we know if at least we'll be dividing each of these by the number 2. Okay. Now our variables all happen to be the same. So I have a common variable of n. Now I can just take 1n out, but I can take more than 1n out. In fact, what I try to do is I take out the variable with the lowest exponent. In this case, the lowest exponent is n to the power of 3, which means I can divide all of these by n 2n to the power of 3. Okay. Now... Very important, some of you may have done this again, you divided by the right term, but you forgot to put it outside of the brackets. Very important, otherwise, again, it's not equivalent. So, 2n to the power of 5 divided by 2n to the power of 3 gives us n, yes. We just subtract our two exponents. 5 subtract 3 gives us 2. 12n to the power of 4 divided by 2n to the power of 3. 12 divided by 2 is... And n4, or n to the power of 4, divided by n to the power of 3, just n. Finally, negative 6 divided by 2. And n cubed divided by n cubed, 1. Again, remember, this divides to make the number 1. 1 times negative 3 is just negative 3, so we don't need to write the 1 in. But remember, it does not make nothing. It makes a number. Next question is very similar to B, just a little more complex. Instead of having only one variable like we did in B, we have two variables. We still have a coefficient, okay, 12, 10, and 4. What coefficient can I take out of all of those? 
Two. Two. Two is a common factor. In fact, it's the greatest common factor of four, ten, and twelve. What about our n? That's right. n squared is the lowest variable n exponent. And p? p squared also. All right? Because we have a p cubed and then squared, and squared is the lowest. So we're factoring 2n squared times p squared out of all of these. So now we take that term. Thanks, man. 2n squared p squared. And we divide each of them. 4 divided by 2 is? Thank you. n squared divided by n squared is? 1. 1. We don't need to write it in. P cubed divided by P squared? P. P to the power of 1 or just P. Then we put our plus sign, assuming it's going to be positive. Positive 10 divided by 2? 5. 5. N to the power of 4 divided by N squared? N squared. And P squared divided by P squared? 1. Just 1, but we don't need to write it in. And finally, negative 12 divided by 2? Negative 6. N cubed, N squared is just N, and the P's cancel out. This should have been your final answer for C. can all be done in one step here. So, this again is common factoring. And I know it doesn't look like a, we, we normally have. Factor. Oh, gosh. There we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to propose to you that we use a variable to represent these exponents so it looks a little easier to work with. So what I'm going to say is, because this looks very odd and I'm having trouble taking a common factor out, what we'll say is I'm going to go let, and because there's no x already in this, let x equal b plus 1. So I'm going to rewrite this entire equation. But anytime I have a bracket b plus 1, I'm going to put x in instead. Whoa. So now we have 9cx. So now I need the common factor between these two terms. Well, if you take a look, x comes out of both of these. So we are going to take a common factor of x out. So our next bracket will read x on the outside. And inside the brackets, whatever is left. Well, we have a plus 9c. But we're not finished because remember, we said let x equal this. So we need to plug that back in. We're going to plug in b plus 1 for our x. So our question now becomes b plus 1 times a plus 9c. That would be our... That would be our Okay, the next one here, common factoring again. It is the exact same type of question. Instead of doing the let x equal a common bracket, I'm actually just going to look at this and solve it. So, I've noticed that r plus u and r plus u is attached to both terms. So, in other words, that is my common factor. I'm going to take r plus u to the outside. And in our other bracket, I just put in the other terms that would be left. So we're left with 4s minus t. So your final answer, I'll write in black, r plus u, 4s minus t. Question f. This is again a common factoring. Now, if I look through all of the terms, there isn't a common factor I can take out. But if I separate them, I can take a common factor out of two at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have kind of imaginary brackets around the first two terms and then imaginary brackets around the next two terms. So a common factor of the very first two would be x. I can take x out of both of those brackets. So we'll be left with x. x squared divided by x is x. 3x divided by x is 3. Okay. And in the second bracket Technically, that's positive 2. I should have put the green lining all the way around. I can take positive 2 out of both. So now I have positive 2 on the outside. And we have x 
6 pi by 2 is 3. Now what I've done, very important that you guys notice this, we've now created a question like the ones above. The common factor is x plus 3. So now I take x plus 3 to the outside for both. And in the other bracket, we put in whatever's left, which is x plus 2. That would be our final answer in terms of factoring. There are two steps to it. Last question. Same idea. I look at all four. I can't take a common factor out of all of them. So I'm going to break them into pairs. Okay? So I'm going to take a common factor out of both sets of pairings. Now in the first one, what can I take out? Four I can actually take out. And V. So, with our first set of brackets, we'll have 4v on the outside. Inside the brackets, we'll have 4v minus 3. Okay. Now, our other set of brackets. I'm going to show you a common error here. It's not technically an error. You could use it as a different step. What is a common factor I could take out of both of these? 3v. Okay. Right. 3v is a common factor. I'm going to tell you that it's not complete, but let's work with that. 3v. Oops, sorry, not 3v, just 3. What am I saying? So we take 3 out. So I have positive 3. And in the brackets, what's negative 12v divided by 3? Negative 4v. And what's 9 divided by 3? 3. So, have I created... Two brackets that are the same? Yeah. No. This is positive. This is negative. This is negative. This is positive. But there's a simple way to fix this. If I had taken out negative 3 from both, okay? So let's make this now a negative. So this term here becomes negative. And our numbers will now change in those brackets. When I divide negative 12v by negative 3, we get positive 4v. And when I divide positive 9 by negative 3, I get negative 3. I then have two brackets that are the same. So, again, guys, I want you to pay attention. We factor out the 4v minus 3. What's in the other bracket? <laughs> Okay, now, if you got this far, I gave you full marks, but this was supposed to be simplified even farther. How can I rewrite this? Squared. 